I wanted to create this video as a PSA to those who might be new to the Ryzen scene or just new to PC building in general. My friend Tony from Realty PC Customs asked me a question about the viability of the 8700K for a friend in light of AMD's latest release, the 3600. Both are 6 core, 12 thread chips, you could also bump the 3600X into this if you really want to, and both have unlocked multipliers. And while the 8700K may be the marginally better performer in many titles thanks to the higher clock speed, it's often 100 plus US dollars more. We're talking $200 versus 350 So it was an easy decision for me. Go Ryzen 5 3600. Why wouldn't you? But there's a problem with that suggestion at this point, and that's what I want to discuss in this video. If you're rocking the Windows 10 operating system and haven't activated your copy, click the link below and purchase an OEM license from SCD Key. Then click here, 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 and then here. Paste your activation key and you'll have a fully activated OS in seconds. And be sure to use my offer code SStudio for an 18% discount on your order. So if you've been saving up all summer for that sweet new Zen 2 rig, the 3600 or 3600X might look like an appealing option. And for sure, they're some of the best value CPUs on the market. Difficult for me to recommend anything else really in its price category, or even above its price category in certain cases. And the rationale is this, while the 3600 and its X counterpart don't exactly match an overclocked 8700K frame for frame in most titles, the $150 saved could instead be recycled into a significantly better graphics card, assuming a fixed budget. Consider these two systems, built with the exact same $1,000 budget. I had to compromise on a 1660 Ti for the 8700K rig, whereas in the Ryzen build, I could squeeze in a Strix RTX 2070. Those are two very different cards, and I guarantee you'll see higher frame rates in the Ryzen rig as a result. What little performance you lose in the AMD CPU, you'll gain tenfold in the upgraded GPU. But there's a problem. You see, when I swing on over to PC Part Picker for a price breakdown, I'm prompted by this compatibility warning. These parts have potential issues or incompatibilities. And if you notice, this only pops up when we select certain motherboards, basically anything other than X570. Of course, the latest chipset from AMD is gonna work with the latest CPU from AMD, but even though we were promised support for X470 and B450 and arguably X370 and B350, even, well, we weren't promised A320 support, but we proved that it could work, that doesn't mean that the two are gonna pair it like peanut butter and jelly right out of the gate. There's something you gotta be aware of when jumping straight into Ryzen for the first time. You see, every motherboard has a BIOS, a basic input-output system. It runs system checks upon initial boot and acts as the intermediary of sorts between your CPU and external devices. If you don't have an up-to-date BIOS, it won't recognize your CPU and you won't get a post. And the problem is a lot of budget boards, particularly B350 and 450s, is the only way to upgrade your BIOS have a CPU that is already compatible with the current BIOS in that motherboard. It's kind of a catch-22. Someone jumping into Ryzen from, say, Haswell will want to buy something like a 3600 more than likely, along with a budget motherboard. B450s are great fits, but you need a Zen Plus chip to upgrade the present BIOS to support the 3600 out of the gate. So this leaves a few options, and it's kind of the gist of the video. The first option is to use a secondhand Zen or Zen Plus CPU to boot into QFlash, MFlash, or whatever your vendor calls it. Many who upgraded from a 1700 or 2700 did exactly this, and it's convenient because you have the older CPU already on hand. The second option is to buy an X570 motherboard. And this scenario reminds me a lot of ways of Coffee Lake before B360 boards came out. If you wanted to buy a cheaper Core i5, something like an 8400, you needed to pair it with an expensive H or Z series chipset board. In fact, that situation was worse in ways because there was no alternative to the B360 chipset at the time. It wasn't like you could use an older B series board from Intel. If you wanted a locked Core i5, H370 was the only way to go. And they were fairly expensive when seen in the context of a CPU's price. And that's why option two really doesn't make sense much for me, really at all. Why spend two or three or, Jesus, even $600 on an X570 motherboard when you'd be just fine with a B350 or 450 board for under a hundred bucks? And that leads us to option three. Snag what AMD calls a short-term processor loan boot kit. Essentially, they give you a cheap CPU to throw in your board for the BIOS update. It's actually a pretty cool program, though I've never had to use it myself, so I can't really speak to how long it would take to go through the process, and that's probably the only real downside. You've gotta wait a bit, and you need to have Zen 2 chips on hand, at least one of them, 
to, uh, to submit the form because they require a serial number for validation up front. I've attached the link below and it details the steps needed to receive the loaner kit. It's kind of a, you know, just a wait and see game, right? Once the BIOS has been updated though, the steps of which we've documented in several videos, including this one right here, you can power off your system again, pop in your Zen 2 chip, double check that everything works, and then mail back that loaner chip, which AMD is saying will be an Athlon 200GE, in case you're wondering. Sorry everyone. Like always, Greg forgot about something. No, no, that's not what you're supposed to say. Oh, uh, what? Say something that's not as insulting. <laughs> Good. There's actually way more to the BIOS flashback option than I originally thought, and this is totally my fault. It just comes with being on vacation. I'm gonna use that as my excuse for not doing enough research about this. MSI is actually one of the few motherboard vendors that has made BIOS flashback more accessible for cheaper boards, including a lot of the B450 boards they offer. The Tomahawk series boards are very popular for this. In fact, the, the board that I listed in this video earlier supports BIOS flashback and it is a method that allows you to flash your BIOS without a CPU in the socket. So you don't need a Zen or Zen Plus CPU, you don't need to wait for AMD's boot kit, you can just update via a USB stick without any CPU in the socket. That's very convenient and it does give uh, users who are jumping into Ryzen 2, or well, Zen 2, for the first time, an option to use a B-series board without the need to update and go through all the hassle we discussed in the first two or three options. So. Yeah, I wanted to throw this in the video because it's important and uh, I didn't want to publish this video without that being in there. So for those who watched this video before I private it, private, privatized it, pri privated it? Something like that. Before I took it down, uh, for those who said that, I appreciate it because I don't want this to, to go unnoticed in a video like this. Um, and I want to make sure we get all the info out there and that it's as accurate and up to date as possible. So again, check out the link to the Reddit post uh, in the video description. It has a list of boards. Currently it's Asus and MSI uh, for the most part at this point that have the BIOS flashback ASRock and Gigabyte as far as I'm aware do not have any of the B series boards um, currently supporting either the Q Flash Plus for Gigabyte and then whatever ASRock calls theirs. Um, they just, they don't have those. So uh, MSI is the big one. ASUS is another one that's kind of up in the ranks. And uh, you can click the link below to that Reddit post. And if you want to jump into Zen 2 for the first time, I recommend buying one of those MSI or ASUS boards. So that's all for this one. It's a bit of a shame that new builders looking to ball on a budget need to go through these hoops, but it's the price we pay for the lack of B550 boards on the market currently. We always have to wait a bit longer for that. And I think vendors do this on purpose. Maybe it's a way to sell more of their expensive X SKUs up front. Who knows? But at least we have a solution. If this video helped you in any way, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Click that red subscribe button for more, and I will catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.